Hi guys, welcome back to Foliage Loft. My name is Liam, and in today's video, I'll be talking about why your plants may have slowed down growing, or maybe why they've stopped growing altogether. I know it can be a little bit frustrating when your favorite plants have slowed down, so I'm gonna give you some tips on how you can avoid that. I'll be sharing some examples of plants in my own collection, some of which are doing really well, and some of which aren't, and I hope that this will help you get the growth that you want out of your plants. I am going to switch over to a voiceover after the intro, and I'll be showing lots of b-roll footage of the plants that I'm talking about. And I'll try to show some before and after footage of a few plants, showing the changes that they've gone through. So this is going to be a bit of a growth update video for me as well. So grab yourself a tea or a coffee and a snack, and let's jump right into it. First up is by far the most expensive plant in my collection, and that is my Monstera Albo. I bought this plant as a single leaf cutting that was decently rooted about four months ago, and this is how the plant looked when I first purchased it. A nice small leaf with no fenestrations yet, but with really beautiful white and green variegation. And this is how the plant looks now. We've lost the original leaf, which can sometimes happen with single leaf cuttings, but we have this brand new half moon variegated leaf, and a second leaf is just starting to separate itself from the petiole of the first leaf. So at first glance, it might seem as though this plant has progressed backwards. We have a smaller leaf than the one that came before, but this is typical and totally okay. One of the things I want to stress here, and this goes for all plants, but especially for juvenile plants or for propagated cuttings, is to have a lot of patience. I knew that this Monstera Albo had some decent roots, since the seller sent me some photos of the roots before I bought the plant, but those roots, once they've been repotted, are going to take time to establish themselves in a new pot with new soil. And while this is happening, you're not going to get much action occurring above the soil. And I was a little worried, of course, when the original leaf started to brown up. And after I cut it off, it was just the node on the stem of the plant that was left. But pretty quickly after the original leaf was gone, I noticed a new growth point started to emerge at the node. And of course I was thrilled to see the variegation that looked so good on the original leaf was continuing on the new growth of the plant. And of course with a variegated plant like this, you can look forward to the unique pattern on each leaf to show itself. So this plant looks completely on track to put out a few more leaves by the end of the growing season before growth starts to slow down in the winter. But yes, you should always give your plant time to establish its root system first before you expect lots of foliage to appear. Next up is another member of the Monstera family, my plain old Monstera Deliciosa. It's only pushed out two new leaves since the start of 2021, and there was a five month gap between those two leaves emerging. Monstera Deliciosas will typically push out a new leaf about once every four to six weeks, so I think there are a few different factors at play here that are causing this slow growth. First up, my Monstera Deliciosa is just a single vine, so it is limited in the amount of growth it can put out. Often, Monsteras will have multiple vines in the same pot, so you can expect a lot more growth from those ones. Secondly, I've been a bit selfish in terms of the placement of this plant. It's been in two different spots. Initially, this year, I had it up in the bedroom where it was a few feet from a north-facing window, and it didn't receive any direct sunlight. And I work night shifts half the time, so I often have the curtains drawn until about noon, making it quite dark in that room. But a couple weeks back, I moved it downstairs next to the couch in the living room, and it probably does receive more light here, as it's about halfway between a north and a south facing window, and we never have the curtains drawn down here. And I like being able to chill on the couch and appreciate the beauty of this plant up close. And finally, we are starting to see some roots emerge from the bottom of the pot in the drainage hole. And whenever I insert my moisture meter in the pot, I can tell it's pretty packed with roots, so it probably is starting to get a bit root bound. I think once I repot this plant, probably in the spring of next year, we'll see some explosive growth from this plant as it has access to some fresh new soil and has space to grow. Most plants will want a larger pot once the root bound, so if your plant's growth has slowed down recently, check on the root situation. Your plant just might need some fresh soil and more space in order to grow more foliage. And for plants with massive leaves like this Monstera, it's a great idea to clean the leaves so that they can absorb as much light as possible for better growth. To wrap up the Monstera family, I have my Monstera Adansonii here, and this is a plant that has struggled for me this year. It was doing extremely well last year, but I think I have overwatered it a few times, and a lot of the leaves yellowed on me, and I had to cut a substantial number of leaves and even completely remove some entire vines away. The new growth that this plant has put up this year has been quite small and stunted. 
obviously due to the stress it's been through. And this is when you'll need more of that patience I was talking about, in allowing your plant to recover from its stressful situation, and only after you've treated it right for some time will things start to turn around. So definitely don't give up on a plant in this stage, it'll need some time to recoup and recover. Just picture yourself after you've been sick or you've had a surgery, you won't be back to 100% for a while, and you need to take care of yourself to get back to the same fitness level before your illness. And I think this plant is on the road to recovery at this point. While it still looks pretty sparse on this tall moss pole, some of the newest growth is looking promising, and I'm looking forward to it climbing and wrapping around this mirror that I recently picked up for the wall above this plant. Moving on to another plant family, this is my Oxalis triangularis. And this is how it looked when I featured it in a video about six months back, with just a few individual petioles with their odd triangular shaped leaves. And this is how my oxalis looks now. You can see that the pot is absolutely packed now, so this plant has obviously had spectacular growth for me since it appeared on my channel last, and I'm really happy about it. I think it looks great. Especially this purple cultivar, it can really give your space an amazing pop of color, and its odd and quirky appearance makes this one one of my favorite plants. And maybe you're wondering how I was able to transform this plant so quickly, and for this plant there's a very simple answer, and that's the time of year. The Oxalis family grows from tubers that are underneath the soil, and really only flourish during the growing season. It's actually recommended to cut some, if not all of the stems back during the plant's dormancy period in the winter. This way the plant will be able to rebound and put out lots of new growth at the start of the next growing season. So if your plant doesn't seem to be growing much, I would do some research into that specific plant and see whether it's common for growth to slow down at certain times of year, because that could be your issue. Next up is one of the plants I've had in my collection the longest, and that's this snake plant, the Drosina trifasciata. When I first bought this plant a couple years ago, it just had these two leaves here, but since then has grown into this wonderful plant you see now. And this is another example where you'll have to do your research on a plant, so you're not disappointed with the growth you're experiencing. Even if snake plants are in the absolute optimal care, they are still slow growing plants. So you can give them great light, the fertilization they need, clean their leaves often, water them at the perfect time, and they will still just chug along at their own slow pace. So if you want a large snake plant in your home, or let's say another slow growing plant like a ZZ plant, you're probably much better off buying it large to begin with. But you can see down at the soil level here, some new leaves are breaking through the surface on my snake plant, and even though they've just broke through the soil, they're much bigger than when the earlier leaves emerged, so I think we can expect these new leaves to be quite a bit taller than the existing leaves. The next plant I want to touch on is my Ficus taniki, also known as the variegated rubber plant. The one that I have doesn't have too much of the lighter variegation you typically get with this plant, but the main color of this one is a really beautiful bluish green that I really like. And this plant actually did pretty well for the first few months after I brought it home at the end of 2020. But then all of a sudden its growth pretty much stopped and I lost a few leaves. And at first I wasn't sure what the problem was, I was watering it at the correct time, it was getting great light near a south facing window, but after poking and prodding around the plant I realized the soil was quite compacted. It seemed like pretty low quality soil as well. So about a month ago I repotted this plant and it responded almost immediately to the new soil. There's already one brand new leaf that's popped up with a few more on their way here. So not only do you want to watch out for your plant being root bound, but you also want to keep an eye on the soil itself. If the soil has a hard time soaking up water and the water just seems to fall right through the pot without being absorbed into the soil, you might just want to change up the soil to jumpstart some new growth. This will also provide your plant with some fresh nutrients. If you're not already using some other form of fertilization for your plants, this can also help with growth as well. And fertilization is essential for your plants, especially in the growing season, but you should approach this differently for different plants. Some plants are quite heavy feeders and will love lots of fertilization pretty much every time you water them during the growing season, but other plants will need to be fertilized less often. Now the final factor I want to touch on before I wrap up this video is houseplant pests, and they can definitely have a big effect on growth. So if you've noticed one of your plants has all of a sudden stopped growing, make sure you do a, a good scan, look over your plant in all the little nooks and crevices, and make sure there aren't any pests involved. The good news is that once you clean up those pests and get rid of them, your plant should recover pretty quickly. And I think that's going to be it for today's video. So hopefully if you're having issues with the growth of your plants, this video has helped in some way. And I think this is a pretty fun way for me to document some of the growth of my plants in a video as well. 
But if you enjoyed this video and found it entertaining or informative, make sure you hit that like button down below and subscribe to Foliage Loft for more content like this. And until next week, see ya.